Hey everyone, it's Mr. Comerford, and in this uh, video lesson, we will be discussing the difference between two really important biochemical reactions. One is called a dehydration reaction, and the other one is called a hydrolysis reaction. But to better understand the differences between these two reactions, we first need to define uh, a few other vocab terms that we'll really uh, be using throughout the rest of the year, and certainly as we discuss this particular topic of, of biomolecules. So the first term that I'll introduce you to here is something called a macromolecule. And you'll hear me use this term interchangeably with another term called a polymer. And technically, these two terms are different from each other. Macromolecules and polymers aren't, aren't technically the same thing, but let's just discuss some of the, the simple differences here. So you can probably break the, the terms down yourself. Macromolecules are just really, really big molecules. And in biology, we mean so big that they cannot be uh, absorbed by the cells in your body. So they need to be broken down or digested into smaller pieces. And a polymer is any molecule that is composed of many, which is what the prefix poly means, uh, subunits. So a polymer is any molecule that has lots of repeating subunits all hooked together to make a much larger uh, molecule. That's what the polymer is called. Now the subunits themselves, like we see, for example, down here in this diagram underneath, those subunits have uh, a name too. And where the larger molecule they create is called the polymer, each individual subunit then is known as a monomer. And hopefully that should make some sense to you because if polymers are many subunits, then a monomer is just one of those subunits. That's what mono means. So if we use this diagram that I was just uh, pointing to as an example, we have three monomers all linked together in sequence to form a larger molecule that we would refer to as a polymer. And we see that exact same configuration over here on the dehydration side of things. We have three monomers linked together to form a larger molecule that we would call a polymer. So that's the general difference uh, between polymers and monomers. And polymers are really just large molecules that we would also call macromolecules. And we use those terms fairly interchangeably. So now let's get a little bit more into the, the actual differences between dehydration reactions and hydrolysis reactions. So to start, let's focus on uh, the term itself, dehydration, because you've all heard that before. Dehydration means the loss of water. If you're dehydrated, it means that you are really low on water uh, throughout your entire cells. So the first characteristic that we'll focus on here is in dehydration reactions, we see uh, the overall reaction lose a water molecule. And if you look up at the top of this uh, at the top of this diagram, you see where that water molecule is formed. So here's the actual water molecule itself. It's two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. And you can see where those came from. We have a hydrogen atom here. And then we have what's called a hydroxide functional group, which has another hydrogen and an oxygen in it. And when those two uh, separate groups of atoms exit this equation, they join together to form water. So we have an overall loss of water. Now, a second characteristic that you'll notice in this dehydration reaction is that there is an input of energy. So where we lose water, we actually gain some energy, or we require energy to make this sort of reaction happen. And if we can successfully pull the water molecule away and we can add the energy in, then you'll notice that there is a new chemical bond that gets formed between monomers two and three in this particular example. And that chemical bond is linking the what used to be a, an isolated monomer onto a chain of monomers that already existed. So in general, we say the outcome of a dehydration reaction is we are adding monomers to already existing polymers. So three really important characteristics of a dehydration re reaction, the loss of water, the input of energy, and if those two things go correctly, then you form a new chemical bond, which means you are adding a monomer that was by itself to a chain of polymers, and you're making that polymer then even bigger. So another way of thinking about, th about this is you are growing a polymer. 
Now, if we switch over to the hydrolysis side of things, this is a term that we can break down as well, where hydro means water and lysis means to break. So if we look at the same first characteristic, we are now kind of doing the opposite of what we saw in a dehydration reaction. So here's our water molecule and we're gonna have to add it in to the system to make this work. So here we have to gain water. And you'll notice what happens, that water molecule has to be fragmented into two pieces. It has to be fragmented into its hydrogen atom and its hydroxide group so that the chemical bond can be disrupted as opposed to formed. So we, we gain the water and we break it into two separate pieces so that we can break a chemical bond. Secondly, let's go back and look real quickly at what's going on with our energy. It's the opposite of what we saw before. Now we are going to uh, lose energy from this system, or you might say, um, it's kind of not technically a correct way to say this, but you're gonna form some energy or you're gonna make some energy. This is a, a type of chemical reaction that produces energy. So we see it coming out of the system. There's an energy output. So if we add the water and break the water molecule and we have this energy that's being released, then the, the final consequence here is we will be subtracting monomers from polymers. In other words, we will be sort of reducing our polymers. We'll be making them smaller. So that's the overall uh, uh, gist of the hydrolysis reactions. And when we add the water in and we break the water molecule apart, what it does is it disrupts, again, this bond that we have right there, we're disrupting that bond, we're breaking it apart. So now we have successfully been able to separate one monomer apart from the other two monomers and we are taking what used to be a large polymer and we are breaking it down chunk by chunk. And so here is really what we're going to be talking about for the entire rest of this topic on biomolecules. It's these organic compounds, things that all cells need to survive and therefore all living things uh, need to survive and things that are probably pretty familiar to you like carbo carbohydrates and lipids and proteins and even nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. So some of this should look fairly familiar, but let's just try to put it back into context of this particular video lesson. So all of these organic compounds that are found in your diet and are ultimately needed by your cells, we can use some of our previous vocabulary terms to discuss. So across this first row right here is where you would find basically your your macromolecules. We'll just abbreviate them as your macros. So carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, those are all examples of macromolecules, really, really big molecules that need to be broken down further in order to be useful by, uh, in order to be useful to your cells. Um, but if we continue to now look down each column, the carbohydrate, the lipid, the protein, and the nucleic acid column, we can uh, get into our vocabulary a little bit more. So the next row, if you just kind of work your way across, these would all be considered your polymers. And remember, macromolecules, polymers, they're really not that different, but the, the major difference is that polymers are these molecules that are made of repeating subunits. So you can see, for example, in something like a polysaccharide, you have these repeating subunits all hooked together to make a larger molecule. In the example of a triglyceride, you have these repeating segments all hooked together more vertically. In the case of something called a peptide, you have these repeating segments all hooked together. And in the case of things like RNA and DNA, you have these repeating segments. Again, we're going like vertically as we work down this molecule. So these would all be examples of the uh, polymers that uh, we discussed in the, in the uh, just a little bit ago. Now let's get down to the monomers. What are the individual subunits? So if we're talking about a carbohydrate, the monomer of a carbohydrate is something called a monosaccharide. The monomer of a fatty acid, or excuse me, of a triglyceride of a lipid is something called a fatty acid. The monomer of a protein is something called an amino acid. And the monomer of nucleic acids are these things called nucleotides. So lastly, if we talk about uh, dehydration and hydrolysis reactions, um, if we start, say, at the top of this diagram and we work our way down, we are getting into 
hydrolysis reactions, right? Remember a hydrolysis action means to break or digest these large molecules into their smaller pieces. And that's exactly what happens as we work our way down. Here toward the top, the molecules are large, but we are breaking them down into their smaller subunits as we work our way down. Now, if we wanted to talk about a dehydration reaction, go over here to the other side, A dehydration reaction, remember, is something that builds these large molecules. So that means we're starting with smaller molecules, and as we work our way up toward the top, they're getting larger. So this is another way for you to see what uh, is coming up in the, in the video lessons to come, and for you to better understand how dehydration and hydrolysis reactions are constantly at use inside your body and by your cells in order to make these large and very important molecules and also to break them down into their smaller but equally important pieces. That's all for now. More to come later. Thanks for listening.